Yo, what is going on, you guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Spectacular Spider-Man Season 3. If you are new around here and enjoy all types of Spider-Man content from the games, movies, and fan fictions, make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button to not miss another video or episode as soon as it comes out. With that being said, let's get straight into this episode. Episode 6, Missing in Action. We start this episode with a montage of interviews like the start of the Identity Crisis episode from Season 2. However, this time is for the disappearance of Harry Osborne. Gene DeWolf is interviewing. The first person to be interviewed is Harry's mother, Emily. She breaks down into tears, stating that she has no idea where Harry is and where he has gone. She says that she thinks it has something to do with the death of Norman, and that's why he's back on the green again. The next person to be interviewed is Gwen. She says that she doesn't know either, and Jean says that she's reportedly the last person to have seen Harry, and Gwen says probably, but that doesn't mean she knows where he is. The wolf questions if Gwen could be protecting him since he's on the green, so he doesn't get into trouble, and Gwen says no, she'd want him to get help. Next up is Aunt May. She says that her nephew Peter is best friends with Harry, and that he would know. We cut to Peter's interview, however, Peter doesn't show up, and we're stuck with a shot of an empty chair. Jean is asking if anyone behind the camera knows where Peter is, and no one says they do. This transitions us into what Peter is doing in this episode. He's not at the interview because he's doing research on trying to track down the Kingpin, using that piece of the Prowler suit from Alchemax Industries. He's using his computer for a while and he can't find much. Peter starts to get frustrated with himself. He says he needs to find Kingpin and fast. He doesn't know what his next move could be, but sooner or later, he's going to get impatient with Spidey and potentially even come for him personally. He knows Kingpin has the power to do so. He just chooses not to. However, he must act fast if he's to stop Fit. We then cut to a scene with J. Jonah Jameson. He tells Robbie to print the title that Spider-Man may have something to do with Harry Osborn's disappearance. Robbie's reluctant, but has to agree. Robbie tells JJ that Spider-Man is a good guy and he'd never do anything like that. And JJ says that Spider-Man has something against the Osborns and he can feel it. He says that they've all seen him fight villains at Oscorp Tower one too many times in the past year or so. JJ thinks it's suspicious and he thinks he could be picking off the Osborns one by one. We then cut to a scene with Captain Stacy and Jean DeWolf. A newspaper gets slammed onto the desk with the headline that Jameson gave to Robbie. Wolf says that they need to keep an eye out for Spider-Man. He's not in the clear just yet. She says that Jameson could be onto something, and Stacy replies with saying that he believes Spidey's a good guy. He knows that the press has been bad about him lately, but he doesn't believe that he's actually done any of it. Wolf questions him, asking, can he really go against everything that's been reported on him? And Stacy says, yes, that's just his gut instinct. He knows Spider-Man's a good guy. And then Wolf says, well, your gut's never wrong, so she hopes he's right. We then cut to school the next day, and Gwen bumps into Peter. She questions him about why he wasn't at the interview the other day, and Peter says he's sorry, he just couldn't make it in time. Gwen says that this is really important, his best friend is missing, Peter has got to do everything he can to help. Peter stands there silently, as the thoughts of Kingpin run through his mind. Gwen says that there's a search party going ahead later tonight, and tells him to be there. She's getting desperately worried about Harry now. Gwen walks away to class, leaving Peter stood there. We cut to after school when Peter is at home. We have a reflective moment. Peter narrates over the top, saying that he thinks maybe he should be using his great power to search for Harry. Maybe Gwen's right. Maybe his responsibility is in the wrong place, and he isn't helping enough. Not as Peter Parker, and not as Spider-Man. He's in a dilemma. If he takes his eye off the ball for one moment, the entire city could come crumbling to its knees, with Kingpin at the helm. He's felt Fisk's power firsthand, and he can't let that happen. Fisk clearly wants Spider-Man out of the picture, which is why the Prowler keeps going after him. And if he's distracted, that opens up an avenue for Kingpin to execute whatever his plan is. Peter thinks to himself, he's the only thing in between Fisk and city domination. He could go to the police, but they already have enough on their hands with Harry. Plus, what are the police going to do against a criminal warlord? He'd be bailed out the next day. Plus, the police and the city aren't really on the same page as Spidey right now after the bugle slandered him for the Norman incident. Peter goes downstairs to meet Aunt May. She's worn out. She says she wants to go on the search for Harry tonight, but Peter says, no, you have to rest because of your heart. Peter is still worried about what happened way back in season two. She works so hard at feast, she can't overwork herself. May says fine, but says that Peter must go because they need a brainy boy like him to help them. Peter says that he'll be there, thinking back to what Gwen said earlier. We cut to a scene with the Kingpin, and none other than the Green Goblin. Fisk starts to explain his hatred for Donald Menken to the Goblin, and why the plan is to take over Oscorp. He explains that Menken should be rid of all his power, and says that Oscorp is the last piece of the puzzle to add to his criminal empire, so it all lines up. 
Goblin sympathizes with Kingpin and shares the information that he has a similar hatred for Menken, but for a different reason, but doesn't disclose what, and rather just says that he's a power-hungry tyrant. Fisk says that Goblin will be equipped with his resources, upgraded bombs, glider, and weaponry, and he is to bring Menken to him. Goblin asks, what is he getting out of this other than to see Menken be annihilated? Kingpin says that Oscorp will be theirs, and they will do a 50-50 split between the two of them. Goblin agrees rather naively, but likes that idea. Fisk says that they had to halt their plan before with Spider-Man running around, but now with the addition of the Green Goblin, one of the city's most feared and powerful enemies on their side, taking Oscorp for their own will be a piece of cake. We cut to Captain Stacy, who starts the search party. Everyone is there, including Peter. He hasn't met up with Gwen yet, but bumps into Flash, Liz, and a bunch of his other friends from school. The search goes on for a few minutes, when Captain Stacy gets a call on his radio, saying that Oscorp is under attack. Peter notices the captain run off to his car and thinks this is suspicious, and decides to follow him. Peter says that something tells him that this is trouble. Peter changes into his Spider-Man costume and starts swinging and following Captain Stacy. Stacy looks in his mirror and sees Spider-Man following him and breaks a little bit of a smile. Spidey is thinking to himself that this seems serious. Kingpin has made his move. He can feel it. He notices that Stacy is going in the direction of Oscorp, and Spidey thinks to himself that this can't be good. This has to be something to do with Kingpin. They arrive at Oscorp to see it on fire on one of the top floors. He lands on the side of a building, facing Oscorp, assessing the situation. And then, without warning, the unthinkable happened. A lot of unexpected twists and turns have happened in Peter Parker's life, but this is one he didn't see coming. In an array of fire, an explosion goes off on the top floor with the sound of the goblin pumpkin scream. Spidey's eyes widen, stating, no, it can't be. Spider-Man's greatest enemy has returned. Spider-Man pulls himself through the shock and lands on the floor, helping civilians get out the building one by one with the looming thought of what's about to happen. Spidey says that he's got to get back up there, and the police start to tell Spider-Man that he's under arrest and he's going to be pulled into questioning. Then Captain Stacy steps in and says that this isn't the time. He may be wanted, but Spider-Man is here to help. The officers stand down and Stacy turns to Spider-Man and gives him the nod. Spidey nods back and web zips to the top of the building. He kicks through the window and lands. Spider-Man looks around. Where could he be? Where is he? Where is the Green Goblin? And then, spider sense, and the goblin swoops in, Spider-Man flipping over his glider and landing, facing him as he turns around. Spider-Man says, this is impossible. The goblin is dead! And the goblin replies with saying, that the green goblin never dies. The goblin says that he's going to take back what's rightfully his, and starts throwing pumpkin bombs after pumpkin bombs at Spider-Man. Spidey flips back as they explode in front of him. Then the roof above him starts to crumble and crack down in front of Spider-Man. He gets trapped as the goblin picks up Donald Menken. Menken asks what he wants with him, and the goblin says that he'll see. As Spidey is trapped under the rubble, all he can see is the menacing, piercing eyes of the green goblin pick up Donald Menken, laughing like a maniac as he flies off into the the night. As soon as Spidey breaks free from the rubble, the goblin is gone, but he's back. The green goblin is back. Thanks for watching this episode, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button and also make sure to hit the subscribe button and also make sure to hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button so you do not miss the next episode. It's all about a kickoff. It's all about to get a bit hectic up in here with the Green Goblin returning, Fist coming back, Donald Menken being kidnapped, the whole city against Spider-Man and the rising tension between Gwen and Peter. So if you do not want to miss that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell like I did say. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below of this episode. I want to know what your thoughts are. Who do you think the Green Goblin is? And what did you like about the first interaction between the Goblin and Spider-Man since the end of Season 2? With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care and peace.